I just made this thing that looks like a butcher's block and I'm going to show you how I intend to use it for the snakes. What's up Royals? I'm Kai. Hope you're doing well and I am building another rack. The big butcher block that you saw earlier is actually a tabletop or a pullout workstation that I decided to incorporate into this build. Stay tuned, I'll show you how it all came together. The way this is constructed and how all the pieces are joined together is exactly the same as what I've done in my previous videos. Uh, they're just held together by screws the bottom piece is a half inch piece of plywood that I've cut to size and painted white. Since the bottom doesn't come in contact with humidity, it can be plywood, but all the other pieces are made out of half inch PVC that are cut to size. This rack is a little different than what I've made before because this holds 41 quart tubs. Um, I have made a rack similar to this very, very early in the beginning of this hobby, but I had to take that down because I didn't see the need for it. I wish I didn't do that because now I actually do have a need for it and I'm basically building another one, but I'm building this one better. There is a feature in here that I wanna show you in just a moment, um, but this, this side is actually the back and I'm making this video now before I close the back so that you can see what it looks like. This upright is seven inches. The upright in the front is six inches and the upright in the center is four inches. And you really do need an upright in the center because these tubs could bow out because of the span between the front and the back. These tubs could bow out. I don't think the animal can escape but there is a chance that it could injure itself. So having this upright in the center not only braces it, gives it more structure, um, but it also prevents the animal from trying to push out the sides of the tub and again, possibly injuring itself. So this is the back, as I said, but this tub does slide in and out very well. Um, this will be closed off with a piece of corrugated plastic, but before I do that, I need to put all the heating elements in. Now, before I go and put the rack on the base, I wanna show you the base itself. So the perimeter is just constructed of two by fours and I painted it. I did add a middle brace. This is just a two by three, but you can use two by four as well. Uh, one improvement that I made was I added a piece of styrofoam on this side. Now this is gonna be the back of the rack. And so this is the heated side and this just helped with a little bit of extra insulation. The styrofoam is held on by a couple pieces of scrap just nailed in. And then I have casters on all four corners of the base. The two in the front have a locking mechanism while the two casters in the back do not. One improvement that I made was that I added a slot right here. There is a three quarter inch gap right in here. And this is where I'm gonna install a tabletop that can slide in and out. Now I have done a pullout table DIY before and I'll put a link or a card uh, in the top corner of this video so you guys can check that out. This one is slightly different. It's gonna be much easier because it's gonna pull out this way as opposed to pulling out this way, which is what I did before. What I've done is, like I said, left a three quarter inch gap. Actually, it's slightly, slightly taller than three quarter inch, just to give myself some wiggle room. And what I intend on doing is taking a three quarter inch piece of wood like this, I have more of these and I intend to join them together so I have one continuous top and it'll be painted white so it'll match and this just slides in and out like this. Now, because my sides are open, there is gonna be a tendency for the wood corner, the inside corner, when I slide it in, it could protrude out the side and then get caught on the next upright and then the next upright. So. I purchased these aluminum strips from Home Depot and I just cut them to length and I used double-sided tape to tape them to the side. Again, these are aluminum. They are three quarter inch tall. 
but the gap here is just slightly higher so I gapped these as well so there's a slight gap here and a slight gap there just to center it and the double-sided sticky tape is not just any double-sided sticky tape this is 3m tape it's the same kind of tape that automotive use to adhere panels to cars so it's pretty strong in that regard the lumber that I purchased is labeled as one inch by six inch by six feet. However, since it's been milled, the actual thickness is three quarters. The actual width is five and a half and the length is pretty accurate, which is six feet. I purchased two of these boards and since I couldn't get it to fit in my car, I had someone from Home Depot cut them in half for me. And I guess when you cut them in half, you didn't measure correctly, but that's okay. So I only need three pieces here. I'm gonna put that one to the side. Now what I'm gonna do is join these three together like so. However, I need to pay attention to the way the grains are oriented. You see how this is curved up? This one is curved up and this one is also curved up. Now if you leave it in the same orientation, there's nothing wrong with gluing them, but over time there is a tendency for the entire piece to start cupping into like a smiley. So to prevent that, what we want to do is we want to alternate the ring pattern. So you have this curving up, this curving down, and the last one curving up as well. So that's how I'm gonna glue them together. So here we have it, all three pieces glued together and cut down to size. I gave everything a light sanding and even rounded off the corners. Now, if you guys remember, Home Depot actually cut a couple of the pieces long. So rather than cutting them off, I decided to incorporate that into a handle. So now this gives me a little bit more to grab onto whenever I wanna pull this out. So I thought that was a neat little feature and I wanted to share that with you to give you something to think about for your next DIY rack build. Now I did say that I plan to paint the tabletop white. However, I wanna maybe use this opportunity to think of something cool, a design or something to put on top of it rather than just plain white. I'm still toying with that idea, which is why I haven't painted it yet, but I do think it is important to paint it to give it at least some level of protection. So something like a gloss paint or a satin finish or a varnish, even just a coat of wax, something to help protect it because if you think about it, there are water around in your snake room with all these tubs and snakes. So it is possible to spill or drop water on it and potentially damage the nice tabletop that you just spent so much time building. That about wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel and you wanna be informed of future uploads, make sure you're subscribed and ring that notification bell. As always, thanks for watching. Please share and remember, Royals for Life. Peace out.